peace, blessings, and love to you and your families, and may Yahweh bless the sins as always. So as we know, Satan is the accuser, but we're going to find out in this video why Yahweh says that he is the accuser, and what it means by Satan being the accuser. But before we get into that, I just want to talk about some things. How I woke up this morning and found out how New York wants to decide to stand with Puerto Rico because of their devastation of the Hurricane Maria. So a lot of people, a lot of Hispanics, you know, they're crying because they, they lost loved ones, right? They lost houses that they had over there in that island. And, you know, we have to understand that the Most High Yahweh says that He does nothing for no reason. And let's start off with Ezekiel 14 and 23, where it says, You will be consoled when you see their conduct and their actions, for you will know that I have done nothing in it without cause declares the sovereign Yahweh. Just like we read here about our brothers from another mother, the tribe of Yahweh, or rather say the house of Yahweh, those who got scattered in Egypt. Jeremiah 18 and 11 says, Now therefore say to the people of Yahweh and those living in Yerushalayim, this is what Yahweh says, Look, I am preparing a disaster for you and devising a plan against you. So turn from your evil ways, each one of you, and reform your ways and your actions. Why? Well, because uh, your ways are not the Most High, Yahweh's ways. Your thoughts are not His thoughts. So you see why it says, do two walk together, lest they be agreed. You have to be the one to change your ways and your actions. But what will happen? Like it says here in verse 12, but they will reply, it's no use. We will continue with our own plans. We will all follow the stubbornness of our evil hearts. Okay? So you see why the Most High Yahweh tells his sincere servants, right? Those who know what is right. Those who have eyes to see the things that's going on. Those who have the ears to hear about the glory that is being revealed those who have the ears to hear about the things that is being shown to them to understand it rather say they are the ones who are understanding that Yahweh is doing these things because why because these people deserve it okay the most high Yahweh says that he will repay everybody according to their deeds and according to their conducts okay what do you think the most high Yahweh tests the hearts so that he may reward each person according to their deeds and conduct. So again, you will be consoled when you see, when you see their conduct and their actions. For you will know that I have done nothing in it without cause, declares the sovereign Yahweh. Now we're going to go ahead and look at this video here that was posted on Facebook. And it basically shows a bunch of Hispanic Puerto Rican, you know, military men and women who are singing the national anthem of Puerto Rico. And basically, you know, I'm showing this so that you can understand the pride and the arrogancy of our people and why the Most High Yahweh strikes them and punishes them. But it does not matter how much the Most High Yahweh strikes them and punish, punishes them, they're just going to continue to be stubborn. They're going to continue to do what they want. Because they're proud. They're proud to be Puerto Ricans, right? You're proud to call yourself an African American, a Native American, a Hispanic. So let's go ahead and look at this this indoctrination that has been put upon our people. <laughs>
so that's pretty much it right there okay I'm just showing you this so you can see for yourself so you can see why the most high Yahweh says for you will know that I have done nothing in it without cause okay now let's read Isaiah chapter 28 starting at verse 1 where it says woe to that reef again this is talking about the judgment on a poem which is talking about the whole northern family okay the Hispanics, the Native Americans, the South Americans. It says here, Woe to that reef, the pride of Aparium's drunkards, to the fading flower, his glorious beauty, set on the head of a fertile valley, to that city, the pride of those laid low by wine. See, Yahweh has one who is powerful and strong like a hailstorm and a destructive wind, like a driving rain and a flooding downpour. He would throw it forcefully to the ground. That reef, the pride of Ephraim's drunkards, will be trampled underfoot. That fading flower, his glorious beauty set on the head of a fertile valley, will be like figs ripe before harvest as soon as people see them and take them in hand they swallow them okay but you have to understand that this is talking about how our people are so quick to sell themselves to lovers all right this is why the most high Yahweh says that uh the people of aparium right yasharel has sold herself to lovers they take pride in what the enemy has given them okay that's why the enemy they go ahead and get these hispanic celebrities right to start uh you know making these charity organizations right these hurricane uh, uh fund programs where people start donating to them right like jennifer lopez they got jenny from the block why because she's puerto rican and why because she loves she loves her lovers all right which are our enemies you see why it says that our people have sold themselves? They have sold themselves. They take pride in what the enemy have given them. But let's understand this here, Jenny from the block, and as well as the rest of our people, whether you are a celebrity or not. Understand this here, that the Most High Yahweh says it does not matter how good you try to do or how good you try to be to others. But that doesn't matter. What matters is understanding the name of Yahweh, your God, trusting in his name, acknowledging your God. That's what matters. Deuteronomy 9 and 5. It is not because of your righteousness or your integrity. You see that? So, you know, you celebrities out there that got a lot of money, right? And you want to go ahead and uh, start these uh, charity programs and these, uh, you know, fundraising programs and stuff like that. Hurricane relief programs, right? You have to understand that's all nice. That's all good and all. But the Most High Yahweh says that it is not because of your righteousness or because of your integrity. See that? Because all of that, that goes back to your integrity. You handing people out money, right? You, uh, 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 you know, having open, open, open hands and receiving people into your house and stuff like that. That all comes from your integrity. But does that mean that God is going to bless you and save you because of that? Well, you know, God might bless you, all right, in accordance with your deeds, but... Does that mean that you're going to be saved? Does that mean that you are exempt from judgment? No, it does not mean that. Okay? The only people who are exempt from judgment are those who have changed their ways. Those who acknowledge the name of the true living God, Yahweh. They are the ones who are exempt from judgment. They are the ones who have the seal in their foreheads. Okay? But you people out there who rely on your government, you rely on your money, you think that your money is going to save you, right? Oh, well, I could just give millions away and God will, you know, God will, will say that I'm a righteous person and he will save me. If that's what you think, how, you know, how God works, well, then, you know, you got a lot to learn. A lot to learn. Because, because God himself said it is not because of your righteousness or your integrity that you are going in to take possession of their land. But on account of the wickedness of these nations, how your God will drive them out from before you to accomplish what he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
So now let's read in Proverbs 21 and 29 where it says, The wicked put up a bold front, right? Because why? Well, because they think their money is going to save them. That's the reason why they put up a bold front. Because they think that uh, their integrity is going to be the reason why they're going to be saved. It's gonna, you know, they think because of themselves, that's going to be the reason why they're going to be saved. Okay, so this is what it's talking about. The wicked put up a bold front, but, but the upright give thought to their ways. You see that? So the sincere servants of Yahweh, the sincere brothers and sisters, those that serve Yahweh, their God, who has no image, who has no form, they're going to understand the ways of Yahweh, their God, okay? They're going to understand that Yahweh does not care about your money, about your looks, about everything else that everybody else worries about. Yahweh doesn't care about that, okay? So this is the reason why it says the wicked put up a bold front because they don't really know the ways of the Most High. They think, you know, their money is going to save them. They think them judging other people based on things that God don't judge them on is going to save them. This is what it's talking about, okay? Because the wicked, they are over-righteous and they are over-wicked. So this is why it says there is no wisdom, no insight, no plan that can succeed against Yahweh, right? Because we read how the people of Yahweh and those living in Yahweh they will reply, it's no use. We will continue with our own plans. We will all follow the stubbornness of our evil hearts, right? Just like, you know, our Hispanic brothers, right? They want to continue to sing, you know, the, 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 the Puerto Rican anthem, right? So, this is what's going on. Pride, arrogancy is at an all-time high. It does not matter, you know, how much the Most High Yahweh strikes our people, but they just want to continue in their own plans, right? This is why you got to understand that they're, they're not going to be part of Yahweh's plan. It does not matter if they are our people. It does not matter if they are Hebrew by blood. That shit don't matter. All that matters is if you're going to worship the Most High Yahweh and be willing to follow in His ways, then you will be able to see His glory. You will be able to live in His presence. That's what it means to live in His presence, to know His ways, to know about His plans. Okay? If not, you're going to be left out in darkness. Isaiah 16 and 5. In love, a throne will be established. You see? In love. That means mercy, peace, justice, truth. Okay? In love, a throne will be established. In faithfulness, a man will sit on it. One from the house of David. One who in judging seeks justice and speeds the course of righteousness. And this is why it says this here in Isaiah 19 and 1. A prophecy against Egypt. See, Yahweh rides on a swift cloud and is coming to Egypt. The idols of Egypt tremble before him, and the hearts of the Egyptians melt with fear. I will stir up Egyptian against Egyptian, brother will fight against brother, neighbor against neighbor, city against city, kingdom against kingdom. Well, you have to understand that there's nothing new under the sun, right? This is why the Most High Yahweh tells us and warns us that there's nothing new under the sun. What has happened will be again, but just in another form, in another way. And this is what's happening today. So, you know, I want to go ahead and show you this quick video here on YouTube, right? Hopefully I won't get, uh, won't get no copyright strikes on this video, but anyways, if I do, it's okay. So, this is a video on YouTube, right, from a channel called Origins Explained. And it says ancient cultures forgotten by history so we're going to go quickly to number eight which talks about the egyptians and the kushites all right if you want to watch the rest of this video i'll leave it for you but we don't got much time to watch it all so let's go ahead and get right into it number eight the kush kingdom the origins of the kush kingdom began around 8000 bc archaeologists found ceramics dating from that period around the kush capital city of karma as early as 2400 BC, Kush's urban society was highly stratified and complex, supported by large-scale agriculture. Its northern neighbor, Egypt, exploited and conquered Kush from 1500 to 1000 BC. 
The tables, though, turned in 750 BC when Kush conquered Egypt and they became even greater than the Egyptians, if you can believe that. For over 100 years, Kushite pharaohs ruled a territory that outstripped the Egyptians. They revived pyramid buildings and promoted construction across the Sudan. An Assyrian invasion ousted them from Egypt and brought an end to the Egyptian and Kushite cultural exchange. The Kushites went south and re-established themselves at Miro in the southeast bank of the Nile. They broke away from Egyptian influence and developed a form of writing called Meroitic. Unfortunately, their script remains untranslated, casting much of Kush's history in the dark. The last king of Kush died in 300 AD. However, why his kingdom declined and ended remains a mystery. Okay. Look at that right there. Which a lot of people worship as the temple of Yerushalayim today. Okay, so you see why the Most High Yahweh says that our people, they went down in Egypt, man. And it's time for you to come out. It's time for you to acknowledge Yahweh, your God. It does not matter whether you got mixed in with the Egyptians or the Assyrians. For it is time for you to return to Yahweh, your God. Okay, so we're going to read now from the book of Jasher, chapter 72. And uh, starting at verse 29. It says here. Now after the death of Kikianus, king of Cush, it grieved his men and troops greatly on account of the war. So they said one to the other, give us counsel what we are to do at this time, as we have recited in the wilderness nine years away from our homes. If we say we will fight against the city, Many of us will fall, wounded or killed. And if we remain here in the siege, we shall also die. For now all the kings of Aram or Aram and the children of the east will hear that our king is dead, and they will attack us suddenly in a hostile manner, and they will fight against us and leave no remnant of us. Now therefore let us go and make a king over us, and let us remain in the siege until the city is delivered up to us. Verse 34, And they wished to choose on that day a man for king from the army of Kikianus, and they found no object of their choice like Moses to reign over them. Okay, so, you know, Moses was basically the, the king of the Cushites at that time. Something that they don't tell you about. It says here, And they hastened and stripped off each man his garments and cast them upon the ground. And they made a great heap and placed Moses thereon. And they rose up and blew with trumpets and called out before him and said, May the king live, may the king live. And all the people and nobles swore unto him to give him for a wife, Adonia, the queen, the Cushite, wife of Kikianus, and they made Moses king over them on that day. Okay? So, I bring this out because you have to understand there's nothing new under the sun. This is why the Most High Yahweh says here in Zephaniah 3 and 8, Therefore wait for me, declares Yahweh. For the day I will stand up to testify, I have decided to assemble the nations, to gather the kingdoms, and to pour out my wrath on them, all my fierce anger. The whole world will be consumed by the fire of my jealous anger. Then I will purify the lips of the peoples, that all of them may call on the name of Yahweh, and serve him shoulder to shoulder. And here we go now. From beyond the rivers of Cush, my worshippers, my scattered people, will bring me offerings. Alright? So you have to understand that this is why the Most High Yahweh says that we are not supposed to despise an Edomite or an Egyptian. Why? Because we were foreigners in their land. Okay? Joshua 24 and 2, Joshua said to all the people, this is why Yahweh, the God of Yahshua says, Long ago your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor lived beyond the Euphrates rivers and worshiped other gods. But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the Euphrates 
and led him to Canaan and gave him many descendants. I gave him Isaac. I gave him Jacob and Esau. And it tells you how Esau 